what I normally do is when I take students through futures, the first day we'll create our own story, to understand futures, and subsequently we we'll run through the notes. Okay, so let us uh, start with the, the concept of currency futures. Okay, so let's hope this is big enough for everybody to see. So I hope that this is big enough for everybody to see. Okay, let me do that. Let us talk about the story of futures. Now, my first question to all of you, let's be talking, eh? That's when uh, we're going to get out of the concept. So I expect some participation here. I hope you have understood the forward contracts. If you have understood the forward contracts, then you have no problem with currency futures because there's similarities. There's similarities. between uh, the futures between the futures and forwards and the forwards. What is the similarity? What I meant is, they both create an obligation. They create an obligation on you, or they impose an obligation on you. Okay. Because of that, you are not able to benefit I mean, from the favorable movement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you won't benefit from the favorable movement. You can't run away from uh, an obligation that you have created on futures. What are the differences? Between the two? One is the source. Or forwards. These are available at the banks. Okay. Well, futures. Uh, accessed via a recognized exchange. That is the difference. The source. What else? We can say it's uh, the form. Or maybe I use the word nature. Meaning, futures are 
Ну да, да, есть. In terms of amounts. In terms of amounts. And delivery dates. So these are standardized. In terms of uh, the amounts and delivery dates. Well, for words, uh, Tailor made or oh, they are OTCs, meaning these are over the counter. These are over the counter. Here, I can also add this statement. We can say these are exchange exchange traded. Now you see when we use this expression of Taylor Mage, it's an expression that we find also in other areas of life, like clothes. Huh? You can go and have your garments tailor-made, isn't it? You can go to a tailor, get your suit tailor-made. Of course, we know they're very expensive. Eh? Tailor-made products are quite expensive, aren't they? If you go and have your own clothes made by some specialist tailor or even shoes in some industries, that is quite uh, expensive. But that's what the forward contracts are. Forward contracts are tailor made. These are designed for you. So you go and agree, you negotiate. Future, just like uh, clothes in an open market, you just go and pick what is closest to your need. So meaning that uh, your needs may not be perfectly made. Eh? The, the, your needs may not be perfectly made. Whilst with the, uh, the forward contracts, your needs will be perfectly made. So these are the items that we can mention for starters. Before we go into more details, for starters, we can talk about uh, these items. Of course, we're going to say a bit more. We're going to update our information, but for now, that's what we are going to say. Now, more, imp more importantly is how do we hedge using futures? Hmm? That's a point I want you to pick. How do we hate using futures? The answer is, it's via buying and selling. It's via buying and selling, that's our answer. Now, from buying and, and selling, what is the outcome? What is the expected outcome? Hmm? When we buy and sell, what do we expect?
see the profit a loss. It's either a profit or a loss. That's what we expect. So we hedge one via buying and selling. So then, how do you construct the hedge? Mm -hmm. Construction of the hedge. You are going to have transactions in two markets. You're going to deal in two markets. Namely, the futures, the cash market or the currency market, and the futures market. So that's what will happen. Okay. You have to deal in two markets. The current market and the futures market. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll arrange, I'll rearrange this, huh? I'll rearrange this. I'll put it like this. And there's a reason for it. There's a reason why I'm doing this, you'll see it shortly. You see shortly the reason why I'm putting them like this. We need to create some visual aids of some kind here so that we get over the concept. So what will happen is this. In the currency market, this is where you're going to buy or sell your foreign currency. Now, at this point, I, I know from history that normally a, confu a confusion is created. I've been accused by students saying no, but we are saying that it's the bank which is buying and selling. Why have you changed it here? Yeah, we are now using the futures. We are hedging using futures. We're not talking about the bank, yeah? we're talking about futures. We're creating another hedge, not a forward market hedge or contract, no. You are entering into a contract or you're hedging using the futures. So that is the reason. So when I'm talking about the current market, now I'm talking about you, okay? So let's go. Talking about the, the three months transaction that we've just dealt with in Kenduri, no question. What we're saying is that in the current market, do not panic. You, what you do is, uh, when three months time comes, when three month time comes here, there, In the current market, just go and buy your dollars. Go and buy that. So now, there's a possibility that you make a loss. So how are you going to hedge this transaction that you're expecting? 
Now you create a derivative on top of this in the futures market. In the futures market, you are going to open a transaction and close the transaction. And this is what we are saying that how do we hate using futures is through buying and selling. And through the buying and selling at this point and that point, you are likely to come up with a profit or a loss. So what's the idea? The idea is that through the buying and selling at these two points, the results that you get here will help you to cushion whatever happens here. The impact of what happens now when you're buying your dollars here should be cushioned by the results from your futures market. So then, if a hedge is properly set, what will happen is that when there's a loss here, when there's a loss here, automatically there'll be a profit on the futures market. And this profit is going to cushion. It may not cover the whole loss in full. It may just cushion. But it is also too possible to get a hedge whose efficiency is more than 100%. In which case, yes, you may actually end up with some small profit. But the idea is to reduce the impact here by taking the results or the outcome from the futures market. Now, this is a point that we need to understand very well. <clears throat> Once you understand this point, you will not, not have problems to explain the admin aspects of futures. So in the futures market, you go there to create a transaction so, so as to cover any problems which may arise in your currency market. And this transaction is set by buying and selling of futures. Okay. That is the way it would work. So then I hope up, that up to this point, you have picked the point. The results from here will help you to cushion the loss. Okay. Uh, so then, how do you begin here? How do you start here? Do you start by buying or do you start by selling? That's the next point we want to discuss. Because this is the advice that you need to give us. The advice you need to give us is what should the company do? Should you start by buying or by selling? The answer is, it's determined by what you'll be doing here. What you'll be doing here is what is going to determine. So let's go here and you are going to say, what is the company doing here? Our company here will be buying dollars. Our company will be buying dollars. So, assuming we have got the dollar futures, now I must mark my weight. Eh? Assuming you have got dollar futures, okay, then what you must do here is you must open your position by buying. So you buy the dollar futures. What does that expression mean? You take on an obligation to buy. When you, when you say that you buy futures, it means that you are saying, take on an obligation to buy. So you have an obligation to buy you have an obligation to buy, OK? 
Okay. Now, some of you may say, ah, Mr. Piri, why have you said assuming you have got dollar futures? Some of you are quick, I'm sure, you're pointed at, but why are you saying assuming? Well, because we don't have, by and large, we don't have the futures that are denominated in dollars. So now your question is, so what do we do? I will show you what we do. Nothing to panic about. So what point do I want you to pick? The point I want you to pick now is, how do you start there? So let me go through that again so that you pick the idea. So the point is, so how do you start? Do you give advice to buy or to sell? The answer is, I'll say, you go here and you ask yourself, what will you be doing here in the future? Oh, in the future, um, let's say you're in the USA. I'm a USA company and I bought some goods from the UK. And if this company in the UK has charged me 2.4 million pounds, huh? you are a USA company. And the, the supplier from the US is demanding that to pay in three months time. So you, the USA company, you need to go and buy your pound so that you can send. You need to buy the pound. So once you identify this, then you can give advice that you know what? then I must actually come here and buy my pounds or buy my futures. So the advice here is you buy the sterling futures. That's step number one. Number two, what does this practically mean? When you say buy futures, in practice, what does it mean? It means that you have undertaken an obligation to actually buy the pounds. You have an obligation to buy the pounds. So this is the first bit. How do you close here now? What of, at the end of the futures? At the end of futures here, what are you going to do? Because this is a separate market. These two markets are different. This is another market, that's another market. So here now, the exchange is expecting you to come over. The exchange is expecting you to come over and do what? And buy your pounds. That's what they're expecting. Now, some of you say, wait a minute. Now here, you say you'll be buying pounds in the markets. You go in the market to buy the pounds. And here also, you go in the market, you, futures, you buy the pounds. Won't you have double amounts now? You have pounds there and pounds there. If you are thinking like that, then you are very okay. Then it means you have followed the concept. Because we have said that here, Mr. Peel, you have told us that you go ahead to buy your pounds. So you have bought your pounds and you have made a loss. But here also, you took an obligation to buy the pounds. And then you buy the pounds based on what you agreed here. Don't, won't you have two amounts? The answer is in here now, in here, you close the position. How do you close the position? You buy and sell. Then from there, we can calculate your outcome. <laughs> So how you close the transaction here is by selling. That's how you close, it's by selling. So some of you have seen in some working that they're talking about buying and selling. Yes, how you close this is by selling. So what we do is we just look at it, the rate at which you are buying and the rate at which you are selling, we calculate here. And we say, oh, you have made the profit. Okay. So what, what, what we are going to do? We'll give you a profit. Get your profit. And the credit your account. If you, want to, if you want us to simplify it, we'll give you the check. We'll transfer money into your account. 
Now, this money that you got from here is what you is going to help you cushion the loss that will happen there. That's what will happen. Next, next before I come to questions. Do you really have to wait all the way up to the final day to close the transaction? Answer, the futures exchange, the futures exchange, what they do is every day, once you enter this contract, every day, they do a mini closure, every day. So in the morning, you have taken this contract, okay? Let's say Monday, the 21st of February. That's when you enter the contract. At the end of the closing day, we are going to check in the market. What are the selling rates? And we compare the opening rate huh? and the closing rate. So in other words, we're assuming if this person closed today, what's the position? So we check the position. We say, ah, you have made the loss. What do we do about that loss? When you come to start this arrangement, when you come on the exchange, we'll ask you to make a deposit. We'll ask you to make a deposit. That's what we'll do. You make a deposit. Once you make a deposit, us will be working around your deposit. So the very first day, 21st February, in the evening, we're going to do a mini closure. You have made the loss. We're going to debit your account. We'll debit your account. You've made the profit, you credit your account. We come to 22nd, we'll do the same. So every day we'll be doing this process. What is this called? This is, this is what we call marking to the market. These closures every day, these theoretical, theoretical closures every day are what we call marking to the market. So every day we'll be doing a small transaction, buy and sell every day, starting with it, 21st, 22nd, 23. We continue every day. This process of comparing the buying and the selling rate, assuming like we are closing today, is what we call marking to the market. And the results will always be debiting or creating your account. If you reach a certain level of the deposit, let's say you have deposited $5,000. The exchange itself is going to determine that if this balance falls below 4,000, we'll ask you to come and top up. Some exchanges, they say, no, whatever happens, every morning the following day, we we'll debit you, every day. We don't, there's even no limit. As long as you make a loss, the following day we'll debit you and you need to top up. You need to top up. Some exchanges, you need to do a top up almost every day. If you're making a loss every day, they'll ask you to top up or your bank account will be debited accordingly. This margin, the initial amount that you put in is called the initial margin or deposit margin. Every time we ask you to come and top up, Every time we ask you to come and top up, we call that a variation margin. Now you can, you can ask the question, so what, what is the idea behind the margin? I'm sure some of you have seen, it's security. It's a security deposit, proper, security deposit. If we allow you, to incur a loss all the way, you are not depositing all the way up to the end. What happens? What do you think can happen here? 
if this system was not there of the initial margin and variation margin, we allow your account just to be moving like that and the loss is increasing and increasing and increasing. What can happen here on the final day? Can somebody tell us what do you think would happen? Imagine you are the one who opened the position here. You have this obligation and people are quiet. They're not telling you where you are. Then on that day, you find that actually you have got a huge loss here. It's, it's not a profit. What risk is there? Default. What risk is there, my accountants out there? I know you're very ethical. I don't want to say what can happen. I know all of you are very professional, but what would happen if we are not asking this person to top up every day? He will run away. He can just run away. He will just disappear. How do we avoid that? Every day we do a mini closure. If there's a loss, we debit and we ask him to top up. So by the time he reaches there, there will be a small loss. Now your question is, so what happens if you don't top up? Well, that's a breach of contract. We are going to cancel the contract, debit your deposit account, debit your, the penalties, and give you a small balance, and you're not protected anymore on that futures exchange. Whatever happens here, the loss is completely yours because this transaction is now exposed. It has got no cover. Let's discuss now. Questions? So what's the benefit of this? Since the risk seems to be very high that there would be a loss. So the way, the way it happens is this. Eh? The prices that you're going to find here will reflect the prices that you have here. So it's like you are looking in at today's prices. Remember that our worry is that between this day and that day, the exchange rate may move. That's our worry. So the rate at which which will be offered to you to buy the pounds is close at what the rate is today. So it's like you have got it. Uh, a deal to buy your currencies at the rate at the rate which is close to what is happening here, such that even when the exchange rate deteriorates somewhere here, you effectively you are very close to this rate here. So that's a benefit. It's a, it's like you are buying in advance. Huh? It's like you are purchasing your currency in advance. That's the effective outcome. And the way it works is when uh, there's a profit here, there would might be a loss here. And the other way around also, when there's a, a profit here, in other words, if the rate is favorable here, you notice that when you close here, you make a loss. But you can't run away from the loss because this loss was it, suffered it progressively. You are suffering this loss progressively. That is why you can't run away from this loss. So on this paper, I need to understand the administrative aspects of the future. That is one, to have an idea of how they work. So if you ask me, what should you pick Mr. P from here? What you must pick is that, okay, I've got exposure here. I go and create a hedge there. And the results from here will help me to reduce my loss there. That's the first point to pick. That's the very first point you must pick. Second point. So since you are Mr. P, you have told us that you buy and sell futures. The next question is, 
So should I buy or sell futures? My answer is you come here, you check what will be happening here and do it ahead, do it upfront here. So if you'll be buying here, we are saying you buy there. If you are selling there, you are saying you also sell here. So you must give us advice, correct advice here. How you close, you just do the opposite, that's all. So what is important is for you to give advice here. So to me, if you can give this advice here, that's it. Okay. Questions? Let's come to the dates. In your advice, you need to give me the dates. Futures are standardized. Andy, we've got futures whose obligation expires in March, in June, in September, and in December. So these obligations are not open-ended. No, they do expire. So which futures are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the one that expires in March, in June, in September, or in December? As part of your advice here, when you're telling me what to do, you must also tell me the date. So which one do you pick? One, you check your transaction date. Oh, my transaction is I want to buy some currency on the... 15th of March, it's 15th of March that my transaction will be due. So which futures are going to pick? The first futures to expire after 15th of March. Futures expire end of March, end of March, end of June, end of September, end of December. So you pick the first futures to expire after 15th of March. So which which will be the first futures to expire after 15th March? Can somebody tell us? We want to transact. Our buying of currencies will happen the 15th of March. Which one is the first futures to expire after 15th of March? I'm waiting. I'm uh, waiting. The June ones. Come again. June. March. No, it's still March. They expire on the 31st of March. So you're going to pick these futures. Because you're going to go to the markets on the 15th of March and buy your currencies. Eh? And imagine you have suffered a loss when you're buying the currencies. So what do you do? Uh, end of March, you go to the futures market and close and get your results. If you have gotten your profit, well and good, because it helps you to do what? To offset the loss there. Mm -hmm. Let's ask questions. The futures are standardized in terms of contract amounts. The amounts are standardized. So you need to work in terms of the amounts that are available. That's what you do. So you need to tell us the number of contracts the number of contracts. So the issue of number of contracts also come into play here. All right. Uh, the good news is that, uh, you know, in the recent uh, exam, sorry, the current examining team, 
They have simplified the story so much. Actually, futures have become the easiest for students now. Why? The current examining team is not so much into asking students to do a formal closure and calculate the profit or a loss, no. The current examining team, they have realized that, well, um, it can also take a little bit of time under the exam conditions. So the issue of, okay, let's go on the futures market so on the futures market, let's calculate. Uh, we bought at so much, and also the sell, the selling rate was so much. Okay, have we made a profit? How much is the profit? Okay, let's take this profit now. Let's come to the main market here and let's do the offset. The current examining team says this is not necessary for students, and it's, and it's a very positive move. All they want you to do is. You tell us whether you buy or sell and tell us the date. Then from there, you calculate the effective exchange rate. That's all. You calculate the effective exchange rate. That's all. That's the current position by the, our examining team. Does that sound good and encouraging? Hmm? That is the current examining team, that's the position. So before we go tonight, before we break, I want us to try a question to give all of you confidence that it's extremely doable and futures will be the easiest. But however, do not forget the admin issues we have discussed here. Do not forget the admin issues that you have discussed here. You need to have an idea of how is the risk managed. And then from there, we say, okay, so after using futures, you are effectively hedging at this rate. Gilbert? Gilbert, your hand is up. Oh, no, we can't get Gilbert. I think this is Gilbert. Yeah, um, I, I want, yes, yes, please. I can get you now. Uh, hello. Gilbert, go yes, ahead, you can get hello. you. Hello. Gilbert, you can get, you can get you, hello. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in the in the previous example yeah yeah uh, from the previous uh, example we had uh -huh. our exposure our exposure our exposure was 2.4 million for example yes because we are we are we, we had the payment to make uh, in the mm -hmm. usd yes gilbert go ahead yes. That is, that is in the money market perspective. We have identified that we need to buy $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in our, so at that point, if we had to take the, the route for future markets, if we want to get into the futures market, it means there's literally nothing. We need to talk about the forward. We don't need to talk about the money market. Uh, we have, uh, Gilbert, you have a good question, but I seem to be, your internet is, seems to be failing us. Maybe what, what we do is, um, oh. let's use a live question. Gilbert, maybe what we do is, yes, please. let's use a live question. I'm forwarding a live question to you. And that's our last exercise for today. Okay. I know you are tired, but we need to push up a little bit, guys. Time is not on our side. Okay. So I'm sending a live question. Okay. Let's discuss using a live question where there was futures. So that we can talk about the, the actual situation, eh? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. So all of us, I've sent a question there and it's question one. 